Oh, hi. Hi. Um, yeah, it's the holiday season. Merry almost Christmas. Everybody is chilling, drinking some eggnog, yeah. doing doing what they do, gingerbread houses, all Shopping that fun Shopping for stuff. presents. Everybody else is having a good time with family. We are freaking out. You know why? Taxes. Tax. <laughs> taxes. Now, we're not scared of taxes. We're not afraid of the IRS because we're responsible American citizens. We're going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to file on time. We're going to make sure all of our ducks are perfectly in a row. And we wanted to kind of bring you along with us through the process because this is our first year where we've made enough money to qualify to, to actually file for taxes. So we just want to demystify a lot of things. I, I was terrified of tax. I'd always heard of people complaining about the IRS and getting audited and I didn't even know what a lot of the words mean. Well, and you only hear the horror stories. Like, who's gonna tell you a wonderful story about how they met with their accountant and their taxes went perfectly fine? The videos of ours that are getting most popular are the ones where we price uh, different pieces of furniture for you and show you what we're charging. And a lot of the questions are coming from the tax side of the house. So people wanting to know, mm -hmm. like, how much are you setting aside for taxes? What does your accountant say about this? Because that's stuff that you feel like it exists somewhere, like the information is somewhere and people do it, but who knows actually, you know, where to look and how to do it. So that's what uh, we hope to do is tell you what we do at least. Yep. So up front, we are not professional accountants. Nope. We are not giving any sort of advice that you should follow for numbers or accounting or legal. You should definitely contact your own people to, we're just sharing our process with you. We are not instructing in any way so we're just gonna demystify it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna tell you what we're gonna do and kind of how we sort of operate. But again, you you really need to consult your own tax professional, your right. own lawyers. Yeah, we're not gonna go into like the nitty gritty of all our numbers because everybody's situation is gonna be different. Okay, so what if I told you that there is somebody out there <laughs> that likes reading through the tax code, that enjoys sorting numbers into the right spreadsheet boxes, yes. someone that is really good at it, and someone that has taken a federal test to sign off saying, yes, this person knows the tax code well enough to manage other people's money. Person's not me. And what if I told you <laughs> that they're probably gonna charge you less than $500 to manage your books for the year? That person is an accountant. Yes. And for whatever reason, we were both terrified. Of All right, so I'm headed to the coffee shop right now, uh, getting ready to meet the uh, accountant for the first time. I talked to her on the phone. She seems really nice, but I don't know. I'm just nervous. My books are not very well organized. Um, I, I can keep track of it, but like, I don't like having to keep back, keep going back and like adding things together and trying to get it all straightened out. So. As a business owner, you're building a machine, right? So you want to build kind of like a little factory for everything that you do. That way it's scalable, right? So when you get more customers, more money, I want to have a machine built to where, you know, everything takes care of the money and I don't really have to go back and, um, you know, track things down or, 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 you know, whatever. So I just need to systemize kind of how I do all the money, uh, in the business. So, um, hopefully she won't be too mean. Uh, We've got something to work with, so uh, she likes working with QuickBooks, so hopefully she can show me a few things there, but um, yeah, I'm just excited to uh, to finally get the book straight. This has been hanging over my head for a while, and I'm glad that we're actually doing something about it. All right, just met with the accountant. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know what I was so nervous about. She told me everything was fine. She was going to get it all straightened out. <laughs> I don't know why I was freaking out about everything. She was she was really shocked that like I had some money set aside for taxes for the year already. She was shocked that I already was like using QuickBooks. Like if you put in like 10% of the effort, the accountant will meet you halfway um, and, and really help smooth some things out for you. So I don't know what I was worried about. She was super nice. Um, it's gonna be really cheap. Yeah, super excited. It looks like we're gonna be able to build this money machine moving forward to grow and expand and get bigger. So man, can't wait. Uh, Sounds like it's going to be pretty hands off as far as I'm concerned for the taxes and money as long as I just put everything in the right buckets and QuickBooks. Um, yeah, she told me I was doing a pretty good job and she was excited for our growth and everything. So um, yeah, that was super cool. If you want to have the income of a real business, you've got to start acting like a real business. And part of that 
is paying for like accounting software like QuickBooks or something yeah. else and hiring an accountant to help you with, with things. Uh, same with lawyers for your contracts and everything, but that's another video. <laughs> but yeah, I do like take it from us. We are kicking ourselves as to like why we didn't just call an accountant. So literally any accountant, any accountant, usually your first meeting with them is free. Um, cause you're just trying to get to know each other. Yes. Uh, literally pick up a phone book, go to Google, call, call an accountant that's in your city or town or close by and just sit down with them for a <laughs> consultation. We, we would like, we would Google our questions. We'd like try to find the answers online or like talk to each other and be like, why are the answers not online? If only, I'm not kidding. I think we said this exact line. If only there was a website that told you exactly what you needed to do for taxes. Like, okay, that website it's is not a, a website. Yeah, it's a source. Like what other source has all your answers? That website is Oh, maybe is the person, person like got paid to do it? Like, yeah. yeah. So it's in the accountant's best interest and they're obligated to help you out. The yeah. IRS is not out to get you. They want you to succeed and everything else. And then, yeah, you want you to succeed, which yes. is why you're a little bit worried about taxes is because you don't want to do the wrong thing. And that's a good thing to have, but you can't let fear cripple you. Fear is not a reason. That is, if anything, it's a sign. It, when you're in the business world, right? If there's something, if there's a next step that you're a little afraid of, that means that you're making progress. That means you're not sitting still. That means you're not stagnant. It means you are, you are anticipating the next thing and you just don't have enough information on it. And that's why you're scared. So, and another thing that we were really worried about was we wanted to know the best strategy. Yes. We didn't even want to start messing with taxes until we knew that we had the best business structure, the best tax plan and the most like efficient <laughs> means possible. Don't worry about that. It's just like building a prototype of a piece of furniture you've never done before uh, or or making a temp like a router template or something like that. It's never going to be perfect the first time you do it. And you need to understand that you're going to make mistakes. If you're not making mistakes as a business, you're not pushing that comfort zone Jenny talked about. Don't run off the cliff, but like you should have a few whoopsies because that means that you're trying, you're reaching for the ne that next thing and you're gonna come back and you're gonna be able to reach and grab it the next time because you learned. Again, with the tax code, it's the same thing. You're gonna overpay for taxes your first couple of years. That's just how it goes. And you don't need to be afraid of that because you should be prepared for it. I know he's a pretty polarizing character, but one of the things that uh, Robert Kiyosaki talks about in the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he says, in all my years, I have never met a rich person who has never lost money. Think about that. I've never met a rich person that has never lost money. You're gonna lose money. If you're reaching for that next thing, you're gonna fall. You're gonna make a whoopsie. You're gonna take a couple steps back at some points. But the point is that you need to have an infrastructure with your business set up that you can recover from that and improve on it next time. Fear about taxes is a good thing. That means that you want to do the right thing. And you come to, the, you come to your accountant with that attitude of wanting to do the right thing, you're gonna be well taken care of and you're gonna have more than enough money at the end of the year. So one technique that we kind of have been using, we got some great advice from our business mentors, um, and that was to just every time you get a check, every time you get income into your business, take 30 to 40% of it. Now don't kill me on the numbers, this is gonna be different for everybody, but take 30 to 40% of that income before you spend any of it and put that in a savings account. And then at the end of the year, you've got a tiny little pile of cash that you haven't touched all year that is gonna help go towards paying your taxes off at the end of the year. Now, in your first couple of years, if you have a bunch of really big deductions and you're not gonna be taxed on a whole lot, you might have a little bit of that pile left over. Um, but you might not, you know, you might jump in, uh, you might jump up a tax bracket or something like that, again, and talk to your accountant, but it's really convenient at the end of the year to have a nice little pile of cash that you can throw at taxes. It may not cover everything, but at least you've got something saved up that you're not completely blindsided by taxes at the end of the year. So, so a big surprise can be not as big of a surprise at the end of the year. Right. So it's not it's not a hard, fast rule, but if you will take a, a, a chunk of your profit from each piece of income mm -hmm. that you have in your business and put it in a savings account and don't touch it, it's going to be way easier for you come tax time uh, to pay off the bill, whatever it is. Open your books. You want to you want to make money like a real business. You got to act like a real yes. business. And fear is not a reason not to do something. Yes. That's one of our like life values. Fear is not a reason. You can calculate it. You know, you can put a risk on it, mm -hmm. but fear is not a reason to stay away from something. Especially when there's ways to calm your fears. 
like yeah. an accountant. <laughs> Absolutely. Fear, yeah. If you don't mind, if you like this video, just take a quick second. Please give us a thumbs up and that like button. That lets YouTube know that this is a valuable piece of content to have on YouTube. Man, I always hear other YouTubers like ask for that. And I'm like, does that really make a big difference? It does. It makes a huge difference, me just asking for it. So please, just a friendly reminder. If you feel like that I've earned your like, I would absolutely love it. It costs you nothing. It helps me out a ton and I greatly appreciate it. So thank you very much. All right, so Jenny found us a cool job at her work and we're doing a little display plaque for somebody who's about to retire. And they want it to be about 20 by 25 inches. Yep. And then we'll have to do a router profile and they're gonna take it to a laser engraver. Somebody's got a Glowforge or something and they're gonna handle it on that end. But uh, this is gonna be a different project for us because we agreed to a price and everything before we really like calculated how long it's going to take us it was for like labor. a quick turnaround it was like if we wanted the job we just had to quote him a price quick because it was kind of on a you know quick turnaround kind of a thing so we just said 100 bucks and that's going to be for the 20 20 by 25 inches of the cherry that we're going to glue up we're going to route a profile around the edge very sand. simple and then sand it and then they're going to laser engrave it give it back to us we're going to spray some finish on it probably some enduro bar and then that'll be it. We'll just deliver it and it'll be a hundred bucks. Yep. So uh, we're going to see if we can do this quickly because I don't want to run into like spending two or three hours on this when in reality they're only paying us a hundred bucks. So uh, about two board feet of cherry is only going to be what, like 15 bucks at the yeah. most of material. So we should be do pretty good if we can get this done in just a half hour of labor. Yeah. It might be a little too conservative but we'll see anyway the important thing to know is that we're still being safe we're still doing high quality yes. work we're not going to cut any corners so uh, we're just not going to waste any time either right so when when you when you practice like shaving time off of something just make sure you're staying safe and make sure you're keeping the quality the same you're just doing all of your i don't know your other stuff quicker and then at the end we'll do calculations and stuff on like where we landed with hours and price and margin and stuff Last night we finished that um, that cherry uh, plaque that's going to be laser engraved. It took us, I, I didn't film the rest of it because we just needed to get it done. It was kind of late last night, but yeah, it took us about an hour's worth of labor. Um, Jenny helped, but she really wasn't like working. So if you just want to count my time at like 30 to $50 an hour, we're going to come in just fine, maybe 10 or 15 for the materials. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be an hour of labor, so we're, we're going to settle in at, at that like 40% profit margin just perfectly. So, uh, you know, 100 bucks is the right price for something like that. And then hopefully when we get our CNC machine, um, then we can start doing all the engraving and personalizing ourselves, which we can raise the price for. Um, hoping to get, because all of these like jobs and everything have very specific logos. So as long as we make one file for those logos, drag and drop onto the new file, um, it should be mind-numbingly easy to uh, to see and see those things out and make them super personalized. So hopefully we can increase our income that way because uh, we got to sell the house coming up in a few months. So we're not going to be able to have the shop that we have now. Um, spoiler, but hopefully we'll be able to do some CNC stuff, still continue to make money, still do woodworking and uh, provide you guys tips along the way. So uh, in other news this week, I made this little thing out of hickory and then stained it gray. My buddy has an old airplane part from a crash and he wanted to d display it. So I made him this really nice thing out of hickory and stained it gray. I think it turned out great. Um, I didn't film really any of it because it's just ripping hickory through the table saw and then gluing it up and then chamfering the edge and then staining it. But when I get the, the exhaust pipe that he's got, I'll, uh, I'll show you how I mount it and everything. I'm thinking about maybe $150, $200 for this project. Just kind of depends on how long it takes me to mount that exhaust pipe. Check out this monitor. This thing is huge. Look at that. That's my thumb. 
This thing is too big. It's too big. Editing videos, I say breeze on this now. Those are my old monitors. Those are like 27. This one's a 34 inch ultra wide 4K. So yeah, um, in other news, uh, we launched our next program. Uh, officially, it's kind of been a soft launch. We have launched our How to Sell to Friends and Family and Beyond uh, program. So if you are struggling with the sales, if you don't know how to who to approach, how to talk to people, uh, like we go super in-depth on how to price our work. I know we have a video on that, but I went super in-depth on this. I showed you two ways to price your work that are fair to you and to the customer. And then I went into how to find referrals, how to get sales, how to talk to people. I even gave you scripts. I don't want to turn this into a sales pitch because that's we'll do that later, but if you're interested, take a look. Link to, links in the description. There's a little video that we did uh, that'll tell you a little bit more about the program. So, super excited about it. Hope you guys find a ton of value in that. Thank you for continuing to buy courses and support us. And I hope that we're teaching you and learning. Let us know uh, if you enjoyed the course down in the comments. Please let me know. Um, we love your feedback, and it sounds like from the surveys and stuff in the program that you guys are really enjoying it. So, thank you. And uh, yeah, that's it for this week.